This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. Where we want to educate you about our market, empower you to make wise decisions, and help you engage with our expert contributors. We're going to do our weekly update first and show you what uh, has been going on here in Southern Nevada with housing uh, over the last week. And what you're going to see is that uh, inventory continues to shrink. This week we went down to 5,193 single-family homes available on the market down 10 from last week. That's not a big change, but a small change. We put another 876 in escrow, uh, 876 accepted contracts in the last seven days. Uh, that's up 23 from last week. We closed escrow on 695 homes. That's up 38 from last week. Um, 150 homes were withdrawn from the market this week. That's down 38 from last week. And that's a small number. That's not an unusual, any, anywhere under 200 is about pretty much normal on any given week. Uh, the way our withdrawals seem to be going. We've seen that pattern throughout. The median sold price was 330810 That's up over 10000 from last week. But again, on a weekly sample, I don't want to give it too much credence. Uh, I, it's, it's because the mixture of homes becomes a big impact on that. Uh, so if there were a couple of really big uh, solds, even though it's a median, if there's a bunch of big sold uh, numbers in there, it'll skew the numbers a bit. The sold price per square foot's a little more a little more easy to swallow, and it went up $1.44. Um, I don't know if you remember last week. It was interesting. Um, the numbers the numbers went down, or our numbers went up, and but uh, actually the numbers went up, but the price per square foot was about the same, so you could see that the the, the prices of most people's homes were running, running around the same. This, this is a better indication of what's happening uh, with your home, although the better sort of indication is what's happening within your subdivision. So that's the real that's the real data points you want to see. But this is for the purpose of sharing with everybody here in Southern Nevada. I like to look at the whole sample size. The median days on market went up one. Not a huge concern. But let's look at the trends again. Uh, again, last week you saw the the price here. The price went down nearly twenty thousand, but the price per square foot last week remained the same virtually. Now here it went up ten. But the, and the price per square foot went up a little bit. So th it's an interesting way to watch the trend. But look at, you know, look at the um, the inventory going back all the way to, to the end of May, 6,300. We're all the way down. Every single week it's come down. We're down to 5,193, you know, 1,200 fewer homes on the market. So these are, again, just single family homes. But but that, that shrink shrinking inventory is an indicator that um, things are okay. I mean, look, the volume's not as high as it normally would be this time of year. We would usually be selling more homes. Um, but the inventory is, is low. And so we have to take that into account. And look at the uh, number of homes in escrow. That's been doing very nicely. You know, the last four weeks, it's gone up every week. Uh, and it's, you know, well over 800. That's pretty good. Um, the number of closings, you know, mid sixes, high sixes here. That's okay. Uh, and the price... You know the median price. If we go all the way back 315 back then, it's up to 330 now. I suspect you know we set a record in June. We set a record for median sales price in June. I suspect we're going to set another record in July, uh, based on what we're seeing here on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, and it might be a fairly significant jump. Now again, doesn't mean the price of everyone's home went up. It you know it just means that as a market. Uh, our prices have gone up. And I want to reemphasize, and I've said this before, that um, we're, we've just surpassed our peak, but it took us 15 years to do that. I mean, or, you know, 14 years to do that. Other markets have long since surpassed that peak that they established in mid 2000s. We just did it just now. So um, I, I, I'm not concerned about it being overinflated. Uh, necessarily, although, you know, with the economic situation we have in our country right now, who knows what's going to happen? Nobody's, nobody's certain. But I will say that based on history, real estate does so, holds its own in the midst uh, of a recession, except for the last one. But real estate holds its own in the midst of recession. For the last five recessions, real estate held value or even went up a little bit uh, during the recession. My team and I talked a little bit earlier this week about multiple offers. And I want to talk about that with you guys because... With the inventory shrinking and with uh, demand still there and demand, I suspect, you know, when we come out of this pandemic, when, when things happen, when we either, you know, get a vaccine or 
or, or some way we're coming out of this thing, I suspect that uh, the real estate is going to take off even more. It's going to become uh, pretty hot. Uh, so uh, right now we're dealing with multiple offers. Uh, on homes that are priced right, we're seeing multiple offers. Now, if you're a seller, you and your listing agent get multiple offers, that's terrific. You know, that's something you, you, you're, you're hoping for in some ways. But be careful that you don't get overconfident, uh, get a little too aggressive with the idea that you have multiple offers. Remember that some of those people who wrote the offers didn't anticipate there being multiple offers and might not want to compete. They may say, yeah, never mind. Somebody else is, is going to take this home or wants this home. I I'm going to step away. Be careful as a seller. Don't, don't assume that you can push them too far. Um, and as a listing agent, you might want to just inquire, you know, perhaps uh, what, the, what the buyer's agent is willing to share with you in terms of the buyer's interest and make sure that they're aware. Now, we have to uh, get permission from our sellers to divulge the, that there are multiple offers as part of our uh, listing agreement. Uh, but hopefully they've given us that permission. And if we do, then we can help to uh, procure the property for the best buyer. That's our objective. I mean, get the most money if we can. But, but it's not all money, not all the time. Sometimes it's about the ability to close the deal. And, and I want, I want my, my seller to feel confident that the, the buyer we selected, the one that the, the seller finally went with, is going to close the transaction. So we're going to vet that buyer as carefully as possible. We're going to be contacting their lender. Uh, should they be using a mortgage? And we're going to try to make sure that we've got not only the best price, but the best buyer, the buyer with the most likelihood to close in a timely manner. That's looking at it from the seller side. Now let's look at it from the buyer side just for a second, because from a buyer side, it can be it can be rather intimidating and, and maybe for some too much. Like I said, some buyers might say, you know what, I don't want to bother with it. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Let's find one that doesn't have other offers. But then again, in a market where you've got limited inventory, you might say, the buyer might say, gee, I really want this home and uh, I don't want to give up. I want to try to get it. Uh, there's a handful of ways they can do it. There's no rules about it. They don't have to do it a certain way. In other words, some, some buyers think, oh, they, I was first, so I get first credit. No, not necessarily. I mean, that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, all things being equal, the seller's still going to want to get the best possible deal they can. Again, money being probably the, the highest uh, uh, component of that. Uh, the most money is, of course, uh, very important. Uh, but uh, also looking to the one who can close, you know, most likely close. So when you go in and you're writing multiple offers, make sure you've got a good, high quality approval letter from your lender, something that says you can close this transaction. With that in your, in your arsenal, then you become, uh, all things being equal, you become the favorite buyer because the seller and listing agent will recognize that this is, this is the buyer who can close. Their, their, their loan is fully approved and ready to go. All they need is the property. This, this, is, this one's better. Even, even if the number is a little lower sometimes, you'll still get it. Not always. You know, the seller likes money. Let's, let's be clear. Harvey, if you remember, in our situation, what really did help too is also a personal touch. Our agent had written a personal letter explaining how much the family liked the home, and then the sellers, they did comment on that. They really wanted to go with somebody that loved the house as much as they did. And it's funny, our agents actually said she's probably going to frame that letter and give it to them because they even said that letter helped us get this house. You know, that, that's a great point, Carly, because that's that's so, so true. So when you are the buyer and you want uh, your your offer to get the most consideration, that, that letter explaining your family situation um, and, and making the uh, seller aware of your personal circumstances, that story might put you over the top. Because again, all things being equal, let's say everything is equal. It's the same number, it's the same closing date, it's the same down payment. You know, now we just got to pick one. Well, we're going to pick the one who wrote the nice letter because they want the house more than the other people because no one else wrote a nice letter. I mean, honestly, that's that's what it's going to come down to. And, and people like to sell their homes to people they like. Please join us again next week as we keep you up to date on everything real estate here in Southern Nevada. Remember, Send me any questions or ideas for next week's broadcast. Tune in every Thursday at 3. Also, please let your friends and family know to like our Facebook page and be reminded about our updates at LV Real Estate Radio. We'll catch you next week. Thanks again for joining us.